Companies are a tool in the toolkit of the entrepreneur. And company law is a way to create and structure this toolkit. And today we will talk about this with Manne Ayraksinen. Hello, Manne. Hello, thanks nice. for having me. Nice to have you here. Uh, so Manne is the father of three children living in Tapiola, Espo. He has a background in small businesses, has been active in academia and does a lot of research also. He has uh, drafted laws, <laughs> for instance, the Companies Act. Uh, he has been a partner in a big law firm in Helsinki and also been active in lobbying. And in his spare time, he is the chair of a basketball club. So Manne, why is entrepreneurship important to you? Well, uh, it's the backbone of the economy and um, I've been active in that scene. Uh, I've been working for many small companies, particularly uh, in the 1990s. And um, of course, as I'm interested in company law, uh, entrepreneurship is a big part of company law and vice versa. Now, what do entrepreneurs actually use companies for? Well, probably for doing business, uh, first and foremost. And I think the, the important thing is to sort of separate your own assets uh, and the company assets. And of course, you need to have a company for that. So how can an entrepreneur and how should an entrepreneur then build this company to separate the assets and do business with it? I think it depends uh, quite a lot of, uh, of the of the company in question. Um, what type of business you're doing? Uh, what are your aims? Do you have uh, several shareholders uh, or are you there alone? As long as you are there alone, I think you can take off the shelf company and you manage quite well. But the scene is quite dif different when you have several shareholders and particularly if you have ambitions to grow. What is an off the shelf company? I mean, uh, that's a bit technical term, I agree, but it, you can buy a limited liability company uh, which is ready-made and registered, but you can do it yourself. It's quite easy because the articles of association are sort of fairly simple and the uh, trade register will help you if you go there and ask for help. Hey, so what is a company and what is a typical purpose of a company? A company is a tool for business, I would say, and uh, the important thing is, thing is to separate the assets of the entrepreneur and the company, and it means that you do not, you are not liable for the debts of the company. That's one thing. And then um, uh, another thing about a company is that there is a structure and hierarchy. I mean, if it grows, you have a board, you may have a CEO, and it's sort of structured way of doing business. And then the question about the purpose of the company, the default, the assumption is that it's uh, bringing profit to shareholders. As long as you're there alone, I mean, you can do whatever you want to. But if you have several shareholders, it becomes much more important because there might be shareholders who are more interested in making profit and shareholders who are less in interested in making profit. And there you need to be aware of the fact that the default is that it's for profit. And if you want to deviate from that, you need to do something, for instance, uh, amend the Articles of Association a bit, for instance. Making profit is a bit different if you talk about really short term, making profit right now or making the most profit during the, the lifetime of the company. So what does this mean in practice? This is a hot topic in, in the academic discussion about companies right now. And uh, under Finnish law, the aim is to make profit long term, not short term. So that means that you are not supposed to take the quick buck and run. You're not you're supposed to invest in the company. And uh, technical terms would be to maximize the future, future cash flows of the company. Yes, and in practice, this means that you have stakeholders in a company. So let's say customers and uh, people working for the company. And you need to balance the interest of these groups in long term or otherwise you won't have the customers 
if you exploit them in the short term. Yes. I usually do not speak so much about the stakeholders because uh, they are so essential for a company. There is no company without stakeholders. And entrepreneurship actually is uh, interacting with the uh, stakeholders. So it's an integral part of the, of the company. There's no company without the stakeholders. But to get back to this profit discussion, um, there was, there's lately also quite a lot of discussion that there should be a more sustainable sustainability goals introduced into the purpose of the company. So what is, what would you say? What is this uh, reasonable, or, or should there, can there be another purpose? How how should people think about this? Um, I would say that uh, me personally, I would rely on the uh, specific laws about uh, environment. There are a huge amount of legislation about environmental issues, if that's what you mean by sustainability. One problem with sustainability is that nobody knows what it means. It can, mean one, it can mean one thing for one person and quite another thing for another person. And therefore, um, company law is a bit sort of blunt instrument to use here because you really don't know what the uh, company board, for instance, uh, will do and how it will understand sustainability. I mean, you might be interested in environmental issues, uh, whereas the board might be interested in political issues. And it's, uh, two, th those are two uh, very different uh, issues. Uh, and I think the, the definition of the, of the concepts and terms here is, uh, is important. But what, yeah, so, so you think that the, the, there is too much discussion about the, the contents of sustainability, so it would be di too difficult to introduce it into the purpose of the company on a legislative level. But, but what would you say to somebody who says he or she, a shareholder, for instance, uh, uh, founders of a company, that their purpose is not to make profit, but the purpose is to, to share art or the purpose is to, to create a brave new world or do something else? What would you tell them? I mean, that sounds like a very good idea, and I would support it. And uh, the important thing is to understand that the, the default in the Companies Act is that it's for profit. And if you want to deviate from that, you have to be uh, unanimous with the shareholders or you have to change the articles of association. But it's perfectly legal and it's a very good idea in many ways. But you need to be aware of the, of the background of the Companies Act. So this means basically that uh, when you're establishing the company at the moment, when you're, so to say, drafting the Articles of Association, association you can have a different purpose in the Articles of Association. And then it's, this is kind of uh, binding all the shareholders also in the future and also the management of the company. Yes, exactly. And it's good to understand that it's very difficult then to change afterwards the articles. It needs a unanimous decision. Mm -hmm. And that's, I admit, quite excessive uh, under Finnish law, but, but that's something to be un, un, you know, remembered and understood. So kind of the, make this really clear for students who are not business students or law students, and that the Articles of Association is the strongest. It binds basically everything the company does, but that's not needed if the shareholders agree and that might not be needed if the management agrees. You have a comp company strategy or corporate strategy to say that this is how we are going to operate. Yes, yes. And this is actually quite common. You see a lot of small companies who are not aiming for maximizing profit, but, but it can be a lifestyle or, or whatever. And if you are the only shareholder, you can, of course, do in this sense almost anything you want. So uh, what are the basic principles or characteristics of, of a limited liability company? First, it's a separate legal entity. Uh, it means that your assets are separate from the assets of the company and the company debt is separate from your own debt. That means you have limited liability or actually you don't have any liability of the debts of the company unless you then give guarantees on behalf of the company or, or whatever. 
Then there is uh, structure and hierarchy. There is the board, there is the uh, managing director. Um, also, uh, shareholders meeting, so it's structured uh, organization. And then you can also transfer the shares. You have transfer, uh, transferable shares, which of course helps when you want to sell the company. So how is this different from a partnership, for example? Partnerships are um, for smaller businesses, very small businesses. And it's the, the major difference is that in a partnership, you have general partners who are liable for the debts of the partnership. And that means uh, that the regulation is much more simple because you don't have to uh, protect the creditors the way in which it's done in the Companies Act. But of course, the downside is that you're liable if you are the channel partner. You are liable for the debts of the of the partnership, and that's maybe the reason why the popularity of partnerships is uh, going down year by year. So nowadays, it, the default is that you have a limited liability company. Very strong default, and where you see partnerships uh, is actually a private equity and venture capital business where the funds are formed as uh, limited partnerships. What about cooperatives? Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about cooperatives, uh, particularly smaller ones, uh, employee cooperatives. Um, and uh, apparently there are quite a number of those being formed these days. On the other hand, we have huge corporate cooperatives in Finland, uh, bank, um, pulp and paper company, and so on. So it can be used for many purposes. It has, has to be remembered that uh, the purpose of a cooperative is not to make profit, but to help the members in their uh, entrepreneurship. But is there, for instance, a difference then? What is the difference compared to... to the limited liability company? I think the, the biggest difference is, is this assumption. Okay. The assumption in the limited liability company is to make profit, whereas cooperative is uh, more a tool for the members to uh, do whatever they do. You, it does not has to be, have to be entrepreneurship. It can be, I mean, we have these uh, supermarket cooperatives, so it can be sort of uh, customer side cooperative as well. So also the co cooperative can be very business oriented and, and profit making. Uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, so what does this limited liability mean to the entrepreneur? I believe many entrepreneurs really do value the fact that they are not liable for the debts of the company, whether it's limited liability company or cooperative. So the assets and debts of the of the company and the entrepreneur are separate. Can you give us an example just to, to, to tell what it, what this means? So, well, if the business is not a success and the company goes bankrupt, it does not mean that you, as the entrepreneur, are bankrupt as well. So in practice, this means that the entrepreneur can set set the worst case scenario themselves beforehand. Yes, you can put it that way. And what does this limited liability mean for society? Why, why would society be interested in, in limiting one person's uh, liability, the shareholder's liability, who, who is making profit with this company? There's um, a lot of discussion about the limited liability of, of these limited liability companies, but it does not actually separate these limited liability companies from any other uh, companies or associations or even public bodies because nowhere do you see uh, unlimited liability for members for for shareholders or whatever I mean the only exception is the partnership and the general partner in a partnership and even this general partner can be a limited liability company meaning that even in partnerships nobody is liable for the debts of the company so it's actually not strange. That's definitely the main rule. And why, why the society sort of allows this? 
it's very efficient. Uh, it means that uh, the investors can be um, the investors can invest in several projects without increasing the risks, the personal risks. Actually, they reduce the risks by uh, by investing in in several companies. Whereas if there would be unlimited liability, the risk would increase uh, the more companies you would choose to invest in. So it's very efficient and it means that, that you can be sort of risk neutral as an investor. And then we can discuss if it's, if it's too efficient for the nature and, and for, the, for the health of, of the planet. But it's, it's, it's very good for uh, for for the business. So in essence you can pull resources of many investors in one company and the investors can then kind of distribute their portfolio of funds in the different companies. That is correct. And then one very important feature is the separation of ownership and control. You don't need to be the manager yourself in the companies where you invest in, but you can be only the investor and you can have professional managers managing your investment. If you would be unlim have unlimited liability, you, you would have to be the manager yourself. So you would, of course, want to oversee what's taking place. And that would make sort of the companies we have today, of course, uh, impossible because you could not be a pension fund and manage all the companies in order to live. Yeah, and then my comment for the students would be that this is kind of historically kind of the invention of this limited liability is also one of the powerful drivers of industrial revolution, for example. Absolutely. So in limited liability companies, there are shareholders, at least one shareholder, typically more. So what is this share and what is dividend? Share quite uniquely combines uh, the ownership of the company and the decision right to the dividend right. One share, one vote is a sort of typical slogan. And uh, it's actually quite interesting that, that it's almost, always the most efficient way of, of running a business is to combine the uh, right to uh, profit with the right to decide. Uh, on the on the matters of the company and and the share does this it combines this and the upside of a share is that it's transferable so it's easy to sell and it's easy to pledge as well if you need credit you can use it as collateral and then a shareholder of course is the one who owns the shares and uh, as I mentioned, uh, he has or she has the, the decision right, the ultimate right to decide upon the issues of the company. And the most important right, uh, of course, is to elect the board. And the, the, um, the question about dividend is interesting because, the, as I said, uh, shareholders have the right to receive the profit of the company but it's only after all the stakeholders have received what they are supposed to receive. So it's a most risky investment in a company. So first, all the debt is paid, the interest is paid, paid for the workers, uh, paid for, the, for the, uh, those who provide all kinds of uh, products and services to the company. And if something is left over, if there is a profit, then that can be distributed to the shareholders uh, by way of dividend. So uh, companies have at least two kinds of financing, so equity and debt. So what is equity and what is debt? There's a major difference because uh, if you invest uh, in or as uh, debt to a company, you have a fixed claim from the company and fixed interest. And the company has to pay the interest uh, irrespective of the fact that they do profit or loss. It doesn't matter. They have to pay the interest in any event. And they are allowed to pay the interest in any event. But if you invest in the equity, you buy shares from the company, for instance, 
the company is not allowed to pay div dividend if it does not make profit. And that's the important difference between debt and equity.